Hi friends, this is the fourth semester Bengal University MBA examination. Uh, risk finance subject to risk management and derivative 2016 question paper. Na solve sir, solve solve mar kodi. It solve kasta aktai thein muti. Adu ko uskar idna na no solve mar thai ne. Sixteen mar ne. Ninge seventeen, eighteen, nineteen beko andre niwo kelgada ondo WhatsApp group na link na provide mar thine. Aralok banne. So, that's why you can um, access the health in 17, 18, 19. Anta. Okay, Bani first question go over. Bani... Okay, friends, now we have a question paper. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. Okay, so we have a theory questions. We have a problem. We have a only problem irod matra now solve martivi okay bani first question en ide nodana uh, problem question no. a company employee certainty equivalent approach in evaluation of risky investment the capital budgeting department of the company has developed the following information regarding new project year expected cash flow certainty equivalent coefficient so year 0 minus 2 lakh certainty is 1 Year 1, 1,60,000, certainty equivalent is 0 0.8. Year 2, 1,40,000, certainty equivalent is 0 0.7. Third, 1,30,000, certainty equivalent is 0 0.6. Fourth, 1,20,000, certainty equivalent is 0 0.4. Fifth, 80,000, certainty equivalent is 0 0.3. The firm cost of equity is 18%. It cost of debt is 9% and riskless rate of return in the market on the government security is 6% should the project be accepted. So now project na accept maada do bedo anta avaru keltare. So let's start doing the uh, problem now. Okay. So what they have given us? They have given us year okay expected cash flow and certainty. So first thing which we need to do here is we need to multiply this with this okay so cash flow into certainty equivalent cash flow into uh, certainty equivalent cash flow into certainty equivalent cash flow into certainty equivalent okay cash flow into certainty equivalent cash flow into certainty equivalent so you will get minus 2 lakh 1 lakh 28 000, 98 78 48 24000 okay now what we need to do is we need to discount this okay why because we have to calculate the cash flows that's why because of that we need to discount it now they have given us firm cost of equity is 18 percent it cost of debt is 9 percent these two details which they have given are irrelevant so you don't have to take so the given relevant information is uh, uh, riskless rate of return in the market is six percent so we use six percent and we calculate the discounting factor how do you calculate discounting factor it's very simple for example this one is one divided by one point zero nine similarly this one will be one divided by 1.09 to the power of 2 similarly 3 4 5 so we can similarly we can calculate uh, uh, the discounting factor okay so if you don't know what a discounting uh, how to discount it again you, you can go and search uh, you will get to know in the google you will get to know how to calculate the um, discounting factor the next thing which you are going to ask is sir why you have taken one here okay this is year zero okay so understand whenever there is year zero you will start with one we will not start with 0 0.943 okay so you need to bear in mind so year zero year zero nothing will happen only thing cash outflow will be there that's why we have put it here one most of the cases when calculating npv we have not done this because zero was not given but year zero is given because of that we have put it as one okay now let's multiply this with this this with this you are adjusted uh, cash flow after tax into PV you need to do so you are going to get your net present value so once you add all this okay bear in mind here minus sign is there so minus 2 lakhs is there you need to first add all this remove minus 2 lakhs from it okay 
then you will get your total NPV as 1,29,419.4. Now, the decision here is should the project be accepted? This is what they have told here. Should the project be accepted? Now, looking at the cash flows, okay, since NPV is positive, okay, so total NPV is positive, we are going to accept the project this is what you are supposed to write that since the ex total npv is positive so we will accept the project okay i think you have understood let's go to the next question okay let's go to next question what they are asking suppose mr nagasinna bought one contract of andhra bank future each underlying 800 equity shares for rupees 6380 per share. The initial margin is 50% and the maintenance margin is 40%. Suppose the stock price drops to 57 per share. So what the first one does Nagasinna needs to put additional fund to his account? If yes, how much? What is the break even price Andhra Bank can fall before X receives a margin call? Suppose the price rise to 70, what is Nagasinna rate of return on investment? So uh, there is somebody called as Nagasinna. He has brought one contract of Andhra Pradesh uh, futures and uh, he has bought it at 63.80 and uh, initially if you uh, if somebody has a dmat account they have to maintain some initial margin and a maintenance margin if they are trading in features okay if you have uh, a dmat account you will be knowing what is the initial margin what is maintenance margin let me uh, explain you in briefly initial margin is uh, initially how much money you have to place in your account that they have told it as 50 percent on what it is dependent on the amount of stock which you buy the amount which is there for the stock which you have bought on that i will explain you in the later thing for and they are telling maintenance at any given point of time so there should be a maintenance margin of 40 percent of the total cost which you have purchased that is called as maintenance margin okay let's uh, solve this i will put it in a table so that you will be able to understand uh, there are formulas for this so in order for you to better understand i will put it in a table and we will solve one by one okay this is the table which i am talking uh, particulars formula calculation and amount okay let's come to the first one okay so initial margin so let's come to initial margin so value of contract into initial margin percentage okay so they are telling what should be the initial margin we need to calculate so it is we know that uh, there are 8000 equity shares underlying is 8000 equity shares so you are buying at a cost of 63.80 per share that's what here 63.80 okay into what is the uh, margin they have asked for 50% that's why I have put 0 0.50 50% divided by 100 is 0.50 so it comes to 2,55,200 okay understood what a initial margin is the initial margin is the amount which the trade uh, which the uh, uh, person who is buying the shares has to keep in his account so in this case nagasinna has to keep 2,55,200 in his account okay next let's just calculate the maintenance margin so value of contract into maintenance margin so we know 8000 shares he has purchased which is 63.80 into 0 40 percent they have told 40 divided by 100 is 0 0.40 so 2,4160 is the maintenance margin which he has to keep in his account okay now let's look at the first one does nagasinna needs to put additional fund to his account so what they are telling is the stock price will decrease from he has purchased for 63.80 but it has decreased to 57 now calculate uh, does nagasinna needs to put additional fund in his account if yes how much they are asking let's calculate how much profit or loss is uh, uh, occurring due to this in this case since the share price is dropping you will have a loss if the share price is increasing you will have a profit if it is 
less than what he has purchased, you will incur a loss. So latest price is 57 minus 63, which he has purchased into 8,000 shares. It comes to minus 54,400. So uh, from his account, minus 54,400 uh, uh, money will go out. So you uh, initial margin was 2 lakh. Init sorry, initial margin was 2,55,200. From that, they have reduced 54,400. Now, the leftover amount is 2,800. Okay, so understood how, what, what we are doing. We have taken only, since the share price is falling to 57, we calculate how much a loss does he is making for that 57. Uh, if the price drops from 63.80 to 57, it comes to minus 54, 1400 now let when we deduct that from our initial margin we come to know that the initial margin has reduced to 2800 but at any given point of time he has to maintain this balance right 204160 so 2,4160 minus the reduced amount in his initial margin 2,8000 so he has to add he has to add 3 lakh uh, sorry 3360 rupees into his account okay so the first question we have solved so additional amount which he has to put is 3360 in his account okay now let's come to the next point so break even price we need to calculate what will be the break even price so in order to calculate the break even price the formula is price minus initial margin minus maintenance margin divided by 8 number of shares so we know the price is 63.80 so we know our initial margin is 2,55,200 our maintenance margin is 2,4160 divided by 8,000 shares so it comes so our break even price is okay 57.42 what it says is if the price for comes to 57 for 0.42 that is the point wherein he doesn't have to add any account that will be his break even point so break even point is no profit no loss so at 57.42 he will be having no profit no loss okay so we have calculated the price so second one we have answered now coming to the third one what is telling suppose the price rises to 70 from 63.80 if it raises to 70, what is the Nagasinna rate of return on investment? So let's look at how to calculate rate uh, return on investment. So return on investment is profit divided by deposit into 100. Okay, so profit into divided by deposit into 100. Now let's look at the profit. What will be the profit? 70 minus 63.80. 70 is the price which is uh, uh, prevailing so uh, what it raises to then 63.80 is a point wherein uh, he purchases the uh, shares and 63.80 uh, into 0 0.5 why i have put this 0.5 is initially he will put 50 percent only he will not put the whole of the amount into his account only 50 percent he is going to put he is going to put in his account that's why we have taken 50 percent here if it is 40 percent we will take 40 percent whatever initial margin they have if they give 60 percent we will take 0 0.650 if they tell 70 percent we will take 0 0.7 in this case it is 50 percent so we have taken 0 0.5 now once you substitute all the values all the values here your uh, uh percentage will come to 19 percent so if the stock rises to 70 is rate return on investment sorry return on investment is 19 percent okay so i think you understood the uh, concept Uh, I think you have understood all the concept. Uh, if you don't understand again, go have a look at it. So all the formulas I have put, put the formulas and start calculating yourself. Then you will come to know. Okay, come. Let's go to the next problem.
let's look at next problem okay so what they are telling the current market price of an equity share of a penchant limited is rupees 420 within a period of three months the maximum and minimum price of it is expected to be rupees 500 and 400 respectively if the risk-free rate of interest be eight percent per annum what should be the value of three months call option under risk neutral method at the strike rate of 450 given e 0.02 is equal to 1.0202 so the main thing which we have to concentrate here is this risk neutral approach method so we need to solve using risk neutral method for this i will be using binomial tree in order to solve this equation okay so so in order to solve for this um, problem and uh, to find the value of the uh, uh, call call option we are going to use a binomial uh, uh, method of doing this so let's start with the method so the given is so whatever they have given current market price will be yes okay and uh, we know that the uh, they have given in the problem stating that the maximum and minimum are expected to be 500 and 400 okay so that's why uh, us is equal to 500 divided by 420 current market price which comes to 1.19 ds is 400 divided by 420 which is equal to 0 0.95 then we have we need to calculate e to the power of rt they have given 8 percent per annum risk free rate so 8 percent into three months call option they are telling so three months we will take divided by total months is 12 it comes to 0 0.02 which is 1.0202 which is given in the problem here e 0 0.02 is equal to one this is step one when doing your risk neutral method so step one is again i will repeat we will take current market price in this case it is 420 then we are going to uh, calculate us how do you calculate us is equal to maximum price expected is 500 divided by current market price that is 420 which is 1.19 next minimum is 400 divided by 420 0 0.5 then we are calculate e to the power of rt it which comes to 1.0202 which is given the problem the next step which we calculate is the probability so a risk neutral probability for the risk neutral probability the formula is p is equal to r minus ds divided by us minus ds we have calculated everything this is r this is your r this is your r okay so 1.0202 we have calculated minus 0 0.95 we have calculated here divided by 1.19 we have calculated here again 0 0.95 we have calculated here which comes to 0 0.29 which is 29 percent so 29 percent now we will put the binomial tree and we will see uh, the uh, probability as well as the uh, uh, price at which it's uh, at, uh, at uh, what will be the uh, price at maximum and what will be the price at minimum okay so this one 420 is the current market price so 0 0.29 we calculated here 0 0.29 we have calculated here 0 0.71 is nothing but 1 minus 0 0.29 is equal to 0 0.71 okay so don't get confused it is 1 minus 0 0.29 so you will get 0 0.71 okay so this is one now here 500 is there 420 is there so 500 minus 420 is 80 okay so we take cu as 80 here okay so you have to uh, make a note of, um, we need to be very careful anything below this 420 price will be zero here okay for example if it is 410 year then also it is zero year if it for example if this is 430 okay if it is 430 then this will be 430 430 minus 420 okay so it will come to 10 again i am repeating any price which is less than 420 
okay any price which is less than 420 will put cd as zero if that price is more than 420 like 430 440 then the same thing what we do here the same thing we do it here for cd and we will take that amount okay now now we will calculate the value of call option so value is given by c naught is equal to cu into p plus 1 minus p cd divided by e to the power of rt so we know cu cu we have calculated from year 80 so 80 we have written here so p we have calculated the p is 0 0.29 0 0.29 plus cd is 0 okay and uh, 1 minus p 1 minus p is nothing but 0 0.71 we have calculated 0 0.71 divided by e to the power of rt we have calculated 1.0202 so 1.0202 if you substitute and solve for this you are going to get c naught as 22.74 which means to say the premium for three months call option under rix neutral method at a strike price of 450 is 22 rupees 74 paise so that is what the premium they are going to the premium which the uh, investor is going to uh, pay for that call option okay so let's go to the next problem okay let's look at the next problem uh, what they are asking on april 1st 2016 an investor has a portfolio consisting of eight securities as shown below security market price number of shares beta value they have given it for eight securities the cost of capital is 20 percent per annum continuously compounded the investor fears a fall in price of the share in the near future accordingly he approaches you for an advice to protect the interest of his portfolio you can use the uh, use of the following information the current nifty value is 8500 nifty futures can be traded in units of 25 only future of may are currently quoted at 8700 and future of june are being quoted at 8550 you are required to calculate first one the beta of the portfolio second one the theoretical value of the future contract for contract expiring in may and june given e to the power of 0.03 e to the power of 0.04 e to the power of 0.05 so they have given the e the number of nifty contract that you have to sell if he desires to hedge until june in each of the following cases so these are the information which are given the first thing which we need to do here is we need to calculate first beta of the portfolio what is the beta of the portfolio then we will look into the theoretical values for future contracts of may and june we have to find out then uh, it comes to number of nifty contracts that we should sell if we decide to hedge until june in each of the following cases so until june he will be hedging so uh they are telling uh, how many nifty contract is needed if uh, he wants to hedge his total portfolio 50 percent of his portfolio 120 percent of his portfolio okay let's first look at how to calculate beta okay so the beta of the portfolio so what information they have given they have given us security market price and number of shares from this we can calculate value how do you calculate value is nothing but market share into number of shares for example in this case 29.440 into 400 3180700 into 800 660.20 into 800 2891.90 into 400 2750.40 into 300 2891.90 into 300 170.50 into 300 170.50 into 900 so we will sum up the value now we know beta beta they have given we will multiply this value into beta okay so once you multiply this okay so you are going to get the value we are going to take the sum of it okay there are different ways to calculating okay the, uh, few of them only calculate weight and uh, they directly get the beta of the portfolio but here i have taken beta and as well as values okay so, uh, uh, there is one more method of doing it using the weights okay but this i think it's simpler because of this i have taken this so now beta of the portfolio is value into beta summation of value into beta divided by value so 
I know my uh, value into beta is 109583 uh, Sorry, this should be 30. 30 divided by 994450. So I will get my beta as 1.102. Okay, it comes to uh, I'm uh, the last number. It it's something like 1.10. Uh, seven eight or something like that it comes so i have uh, uh, rounded off to to 1.102 now the first thing beta we have calculated now we need to calculate the theoretical value of future contract expiring for may and june okay so for that we have a formula called f is equal to sc in s into e to the power of rt this is the theoretical value of future contract which we do so s as they have provided if you look at the uh, current uh, nifty futures uh, are traded at 8500 okay in the problem itself they have given 8500 this is the current uh, future uh, price that we need to take then we will take e to the power of 0 0.2 into 2 why 2 we are taking so 2 means see uh, we are calculating from april 1st so april may so two months comes that's why we have taken two divided by 12 months if it is june we will take april may june three months we will take so three by 12 so here we got e is equal to 0 0.033 but from the problem we have only e to the power of 0 0.3 e to the power of 0 0.04 e to the power of 0 0.05 okay how do we calculate this so how we calculate this is very simple okay uh, e to the power of z this minus this will give you this okay using this okay 0 0.02 into 33 divided by 100 why because i need 33 here that's why 33 i have taken 0 0.042 add this to this okay then you will get e is equal to 0 0.33 okay so e is equal to 0 let me rub this so that uh, you will be able to understand okay look e is equal to 0 0.0 Three three is this plus this whatever we have got so one point zero three three eight seven this it's okay if you don't do it also okay it, it's that we have taken it from this minus this sixty seven thirty three we have calculated okay so mind this usually e to the power of would be given in the um, problem itself if they have not given in this case they have not given we need to uh, get the answer for e to point 0 0.333 now uh, according to this we will substitute e to the power of 0 0.33 with this value and we will get the contract as 8788 so sorry uh, a price of the uh, may contract is 8788 okay similarly we do it for uh, june okay june it's straightforward june s is equal to e to the power of rt as i told for june it will be april may june that's why three months we have taken divided by number of months is 12 0 0.05 this they have given it in a problem itself e is equal to 0 0.05 mostly they will give this e in the problem itself otherwise you have to use scientific calculator to do this Okay, so it will come to 1.05127. So the value would be 8935.80. So the second question is done that theoretical value of future contract expiring May and June we have calculated. Okay, now the next thing we have to calculate is the number of nifty contract that he would have to sell if he desires to hedge until uh, it's not uh, 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 last uh, till last he has to edge that's uh, why uh, they have given until last they have given so till um, um, april may june till june he has to hedge how many contract he has to hedge it depends upon the weightage of the portfolio so first they are telling well, let's calculate uh, how to calculate number of nifty contract is equal to value of position to be hedged this value we already calculated uh, if when calculating beta we had uh, market price into number of shares and we had done a summation that is the value of a position of to be at value of future contract value of future contract all the three three months they have to hedge till uh, june they have to hedge they have given here 
if you look at your future for may is 8700 this one we are not interested why because till june we will be hedging futures for june are being quoted at 8550 so this is important for us if this is not given okay so how do we take it uh, you might ask sir if this is not given order take the theoretical value for june and uh, uh, use the uh, value that we have calculated for the theoretical value in this case they have given in the problem that's why we are taking taking as 8550 okay let's first calculate for the total portfolio so for the total portfolio it will be value of a position to be hedged 994450 this is this i have told this I have told is the uh, your uh, share price into number of shares that we calculated while doing beta. Then this one, as I told 8550, we have taken it from here. Why? Because we are uh, hedging till June. That's why we have taken 8550. 25, this is the units in which it is sold if you look at the problem you will get 25 units so 25 units of nifty uh, should uh, each sold they have given that's why two you are taken and beta we calculated beta 1.10 so it comes to 5.1269 we can't have 0.269 contract that's why i have uh, rounded off it to six contracts okay now similarly let's do it for the um, 50 percent of the portfolio so 50% of the portfolio is nothing but for this calculate 50% you don't have to do the calculation everything why because this calculation we have done okay this calculation we have already done only thing 0.5 we need to add so 0.5 so multiply 5.1269 into 0.5 will get 2.56 since we can't have a 56 contract we are going to do three contracts we are going to round it off to three contracts now uh, this is 50%. So 50 divided by 100 is 0.5. That's why I have taken it here as 0.5. Okay, next 120%. Similar thing you do for this, you multiply with 1.2. Okay, so since we have already calculated this value into this value, we have already cal calculated here. So 5.1269 into 1.2, if you make it will come to 6.15. Since we can't have 0.15 contract, we are rounding it off to 7 contracts. Okay, so if total portfolio is there, six contracts, if 50% of the portfolio is there, three contracts, 120% of the portfolio is there, seven contracts. This, since it is been hedged till June, we have to take this value. If this value is not given, please take the theoretical value which has been provided. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next problem then. Okay, let's look at the problem what they are asking. Okay, the initial investment outlay for a capital investment project consists of 100 lakhs for plant and machinery and 40 lakhs for working capital. Other details are summarized below. Sales, one to five years, one, one lakh unit they are telling. Selling price, variable cost, fixed overheads, a rate of depreciation on plant and machinery, WDV method, return on value method. So they have given 25%. Salvage value of uh, plant and machinery equal to uh, return down value at the end of the year five. Applicable tax rate is 40%. Time horizon is five years. Post tax cutoff rate is 12%. Okay, so that one post cutoff rate we will uh, we we will take it to calculate npv why because they have uh, given us to calculate npv so no other discounting rate is there so post cash post tax cutoff rate we will take it for a discounting rate now what they are telling to do indicate the financial viability of the project by calculating the net present value okay so they want us to first calculate the net present value then do a sensitivity and sensitivity analysis by decreasing the selling price by 10 percent in the first case and then by increasing the variable cost by 10 percent okay so this two sensitivity analysis we have to do let's go uh, i will not be taking this sales i will be only taking selling price variable cost and we will be deriving it uh, so that it will be easy for us to do the problem okay first the first and the foremost thing what we need to do so first and the foremost thing we need to determine 
depreciation they have given us return down value method and they have given us 25 percent so how do we calculate so for this 100 we need to calculate 25 percent it comes to 25 then from this 100 we have to remove 25 this one and then we are we were going to get a value this is the value for the second year for the plant and missionary for this we take 25 percent it will be 18.75 75 for then we have to remove from 75 we have to remove 18.75 we get 56.25 for this we have to take 25 percent we get 14.06 from this 56.25 we have to uh, minus 14.06 we are going to get 42.19 for this we have to take 25 percent which comes to 10.55 then we have to come here 42.19 minus 10.55 we get 31.64 for this we have to calculate 25 percent we get 7.91 and the remaining why i have calculated this is this will be your salvage value so this is very important why because salvage value we have to take at the end of the fifth year so 31.64 minus 7.91 i am going to get 23.73 so till six years we are taking the values okay this you should not forget in the sixth year you have to take now let's look at what are the <coughs> variables given we know sales they have given 120 okay then less variable cost they have given 60 fixed cost 15 they have given so you will get your earning before depreciation and tax 45 45 45 45 next next we need to reduce depreciation depreciation already we have calculated here okay 25 18.75 14.06 10.55 7.91 so after removing the depreciation we get ebt earning before tax so for this we have to calculate a tax for 20 uh, 20 40 percent is 8 26.25 percent is 10.50 similarly 12.38 13.78 14.84 then we have to remove tax so 20 minus 8 you are going to get earning after tax okay so this is earning after tax now what we need to do we need to calculate add back the depreciation why because depreciation is a cash inflow not an outflow it will you will not see that cash outflow happening so that's why we add back depreciation so once we add back depreciation we'll get cash flow after tax so 37 34 32.60 31.22 30.67 then after fifth year in the sixth year we can sell the machineries so machineries can be sold okay so at what uh, rate it can be sold 23.73 we have calculated here that we put it in the fifth year then recovering of working capital so working capital initially you will uh, at the starting of the year you put the working capital okay at the end of the year you will get uh, uh, the working capital back what i am talking is working capital sometimes uh, what will happen you have to put in your raw material you need to buy uh, you have to pay the wages for the employees all this will happen through your working capital okay current asset minus current liability so current so at what will happen uh, at the end of your closure year means that one you will get okay you will uh, invest in the beginning of the year okay this 40 is invested in the beginning of the year by means of purchasing of raw material for your finished goods or you are uh, paying wages for the employee all this you will get back your working capital after selling your items that's why we have added the working capital here okay so if you calculate this so it will come to this is 37 37 is already there 34 32.63 31.22 you need to add all these three you will get 93.89 okay now uh, as i told they have given us post uh, cut uh, cut off rate tax cut off rate is 12 percent that we are taking it at a discount factor and we are calculating the pv so for pv as i told earlier we will calculate one divided by 0. 1.12 for the first year second year will be 1 divided by 1.12 to the power of 2 third year it will be 1.12 divided by to the power of 3 like that you will calculate till five years you will calculate you will get 0 0.893 0 0.797 0 0.712 0 0.636 0 0.569 afterwards you will 
calculate the PV of your cash flow. So we will get PV of your cash flows. Once you get your PV, okay, add all this, add all this, you will get your total PV. So 156.88 is your total uh, total PV. From that, you have to uh, deduct your initial investment. So initial investment, which you are going to put is 140. If you deduct that, you will get 16.88. So there is a positive NPV for this project. Okay, so you can accept this project by looking at it now let's do the sensitivity analysis uh, they have given uh, the first one is decrease in selling price okay so what will happen if you decrease the selling price by 10 percent rest all remaining the same so that's why i have put your sales here it is reduced by 10 percent means 120 into 0 0.9 or else you can calculate 120 into 10 percent is Okay, 12, 12 you will get. So 120 minus 12. You, if you do like this also, you will get 108 or 120 into 0 0.9. So 100% is there in that remove 10%, you will get 100 minus 10 is 90%. So 0.9 multiply with this, you are going to get your uh, answer as 108. Any, any of the ways you can do, uh, any which ways you understand you can uh, go ahead and do it okay so rest all remaining the same as i told variable cost 60 60 60 60 15 now uh, we will calculate earning before depreciation and tax then we will less depreciation so depreciation uh, if we um, minus the depreciation from ebdt we will get ebt earning before tax so for this we have to take the tax okay at 40 percent so if you take tax at 40 percent you are going to get earning after tax <coughs> and you have to add back your depreciation back to your eat why because depreciation is not a actual outflow which happens but the, uh, it will be there with you so we will add back the depreciation we will get cash flow after tax for that we will add the salvage value 23.73 okay uh, which is there in the sixth year and also as i told we will add back the working capital and then we will calculate our cfat so for this it remains the same remains the same remains the same you need to add all these three together and take this then we we do a, a pv factor at 12 percent uh, then we calculate pv of the cash flows then we will get the net cash flow total present value of cash flow is 130.92 from that you will deduct 140 initial investment so you will get minus 9.08 so if you decrease the selling price by 10 percent you will not accept the project you will reject the project why because you are getting a negative npv okay now let if we increase the variable cost by 10%, what will happen for this? So if we increase the variable cost by 10%, everything remains the same, okay? Only uh, if you can, uh, this was 60, okay, increase it by 1.1, you will get 66, okay? Or else, okay, so 60, calculate 10 percent for this 10 divided by 100 so this zero this zero this zero this zero goes six will be there add for 60 add six you will get 66 any method either this multiply with 1.1 or this will give you the same answer depending upon your comfort zone use whichever method you want to calculate okay now since uh, rest of the remaining things will be same so you 120 minus 66 15 you will get 39 39 39 39 from that you will take out depreciation you will get earning before tax from that you will t uh, 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 calculate the tax so at 40 percent uh, you will get next uh, once you deduct that you will get earning after tax for that you will add back your depreciation okay you will get cash flow after tax then 
the same principle which we need to do salvage value we will add it here and also the working capital we add it at the end of the fifth year then we calculate our uh, total uh, cash flow after tax uh, pv is 12 uh, percent so we calculate for 12 percent then we calculate pv of the cash flow then we sum it up okay it will come to 143.90 but our uh, cash uh, initial investment is 140 which we put so we are going to get a profit of 3.90 NPV is positive so if we increase the variable cost by 10% we are going to accept the project why because we have got a positive NPV <coughs> whatever variations they might give uh, for example uh, in a 2019 or uh, 18 they have told that uh, uh, increase the plant and missionary cost by 10 percent they have told at that time you need to increase the plant and missionary then you need to recalculate your depreciation why because in this case we have calculated the depreciation for 100 there you and you will calculate it since you are increasing 10 percent you have to calculate for 110 percent okay so hope you understand if you have not understand again go through this video you will go through this sum you will able to do the problem okay come let's go to the last case study problem uh, which is very simple but uh, looking at it it says you will feel it as complicated okay let's see what they are asking looking at don't uh, be afraid of this okay nothing is there simple problem this is a very simple problem which can be easily done by anybody we will see how to do it first let's read the problem a company is trying to decide whether to invest in a new project okay two mutually exclusive project are available each requires an investment of 3 lakh okay each project requires 3 lakh project a is expected to generate a cash flow of 2 lakh per year in the next two years okay so 2 lakh it is going to give the cash inflows for the two years it is estimated that the cash inflow associated with project b would be either 1 lakh 80 thousand or 2 lakh 20 thousand each with 0 0.5 probability of occurrence next year okay if uh, rupees 1 lakh 80 thousand is received in the first year the cash inflow for the second year is likely to be 1 lakh 50 thousand probability of 0 0.3 1 lakh 80 thousand probability of 0 0.4 and 2 lakh probability of 0 0.3 okay in the first in the case the first year cash flow is 2 lakh 20 thousand the second year likely cash inflow would be 1 lakh 80 thousand 2 lakh 70 thousand each with 0 0.3 probability and 2 lakh 20 thousand probability 0 0.4 the firm uses a 14 percent minimum required rate of return for deciding whether to invest in the project comparable in risk to the ones under consideration calculated the risk adjusted expected NPV for project A and B identify the best and the worst possible outcome for B which of the project if any would you recommend why okay looking at the problem it is you think it's a very complicated no you need to cut it into two parts first part you have two projects project A and project B project A is very straightforward why because they are telling uh, both the project you will invest 3 lakh for project A cash inflow is 2 lakh per year for the next two years that one we can easily calculate and also they have given us the PV factor 14 percent okay let's see how we, we are going to solve the problem let's take the first one calculate the risk adjusted expected NPV for project A and project B so first we will calculate it for project A so what they are telling for project A they are telling project A is expected to generate a cash inflow of 2 lakhs per year for the next two years that's what I have written here 2 lakh 2 lakh for two years okay then they have given us 14 percent next they are talking about uh, only uh, uh, project B so we are not considering it first let's do for project A 14% we have calculated the PV factor as I told 1 divided by 1.14 for the first year next year 1 divided by 1.14 square if you are doing it in a calci uh, calculator then do this 1 divided by 1.14 okay next if you want you can uh, again press divided by and do 
you will get the same result only take the three three digits don't take more than that or else you uh, you can ask for the pv factor table in the exam it will be provided okay so uh, this 2 lakh you will multiply with 0.89 you get 175400 again 2 lakh you will multiply with 151 so this is your um, total npv less cash flow we know that uh, each project requires 3 lakhs of investment so 3 lakhs we will deduct we get 29200 okay this is very straightforward for npv for project a now let okay let's see what the next uh, pro, uh, step is to calculate risk adjusted npv for project e and project b npv for project b so we need to calculate npv for project b okay let's start so let's see what they have given for us okay if you look at here if you look at here it is estimated that the cash flow associated with project b would be either 1 lakh or 2 lakh 20,000 each with 0.5 probability of occurrence. Okay, so there are two cases one case is 1 lakh 80,000, another case is 2 lakh 20,000. We need to calculate. So we know initial investment is 3 lakh for this project, and also we know we have a cash flow of 1 lakh 80,000. 1, 2 lakh 20,000. There are two probabilities. So with the probability of 0.5 for this and 0 0.5 for this okay this is time 0 this is time 1 okay first 0 year first year that's what i'm telling to say whatever comes next is for second year okay so let's calculate what they have given for this 180000 if you look at if rupees 180000 is received in the first year the cash flow inflow for the second year is likely to be 150000 with probability of 0 0.3 180000 with the probability of 0 0.4 and 2 lakh with the probability of 0, 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.3 cash flows are 150000 180000 2 lakh whatever they have given i have written okay next let's calculate npv for each of the items okay so for example for this and this okay this is time 2 means to say this is zero year this is first year this is second year this one you have to understand the concept otherwise it will be difficult for you to do this problem okay so zero one first year second year okay let's take each cash flows and let's see okay for time one it will be same one lakh eighty thousand for in all the three cases for time two it will be different one lakh fifty for first one one lakh eighty for uh, second one two lakh let's do for the first one okay so first one we know our pv factor is 14 percent so we have taken at 0 0.887 0 0.76 now cash flow for year one is one lakh eighty thousand that's what we have written here next cash flow for year two is one lakh fifty thousand that's what we have written here multiply these two you will get these values add these two values you will get this value minus your initial investment we know it is 3 lakhs so 3 lakhs minus 3 lakhs we are going to get minus 26,790 for the first item okay let's look for the second item okay so for the second item similar we will take 0 0.8 0 0.877 0 0.769 one lakh eighty thousand here for year one one lakh eighty thousand again in two it is one lakh eighty thousand that's why we have taken two one lakh eighty thousand one lakh eighty thousand multiply these two you are going to get these values add this two okay you are going to get two nine six two minus zero minus your initial investment you are going to get three seven two zero so for the second item is three two three seven two zero let's do it for the third item similarly zero point eight seven seven zero point seven six nine multiply this with one lakh eighty thousand for the first year and next two lakh for the second year okay so multiply this okay you will get 1 lakh 57 1 lakh 53 add these two together you get 3 lakh 11,660 
subtract 3 lakh from this 11 lakh 11,660 so this is the cash flow which are going to get the second year also I will tell you uh, meanwhile we will do for the first year then we will come for the second year okay so second year I have written it here we will show how to do it okay now write all your NPV okay NPV here okay for example this minus 26790 is for, for the first item minus 3720 for the second item 11660 for the third item that's what we have written here okay now we need to calculate a joint probability why we have to do this is because uh, probability is attached to the cash flow so in order to take the uh, total NPV we need to first multiply with the uh, uh, probability so here it's 0.5 is there now here 0.3 is there so for the first item it will be 0.5 into 0.3 which is 0.15 similarly for the second one 0.5 into 0.4 it will be 0.20 again for the third one it will be 0.5 into 0.3 0.15 okay now multiply this with this with the NPVs okay for the first one you are going to get minus 4019 second one minus 744 third one is 1749 okay let's let's look at the second item so second item they have given here so uh, in case of the first year cash inflow is 2,20,000 the second year likely cash inflow would be 1,80,000 and 2,70,000 with 0 0.3 probability so 1,80,000 2,70,000 probability is 0.3 and 2,20,000 with probability 2,20,000 with probability of 0.4 so we have taken everything into consideration okay now let's start calculating the NPV okay so let's take the first one so first one will be 0. zero point eight seven seven next 0 0.769 okay so first year cash flow is 220000 so 220000 and the second year is 180000 so 180000 similarly what i how i have done for the first one the same thing i am doing only thing i have done everything and shown here uh, and uh, I am showing each and every step how to do so multiply this so if you multiply this first one you are going to get 1,92,000 second one if you let multiply 1,32,000 add these two together you will get 3,31,000 minus your initial investment you will get 31,360 okay similarly you need to do it for the second one okay let's do it for the second one okay so for the second one it will be same 0 0.877 0 0.769 so first year cash flow will be 2 lakh 20 thousand 2 lakh 20 thousand 2 lakh 20 thousand second year will be again 2,20,000 2,20,000 multiply this with this multiply this with this we are going to get 192,940,169,180 add these two together you are going to get 3,62,120 minus your initial investment you are going to get a positive NPV of 62 one two zero okay similarly do it for the last item why i am showing all this is few of them will not be able to understand that's why i am showing step by step okay so i know most of you will think that you are very smart and you will be able to do it but a few of them will not be very smart so i am teaching them each step so seven six nine so for the first for the third one it's two lakh twenty thousand again two lakh twenty thousand Okay, next two lakh seventy thousand, two lakh seventy thousand, two lakh seventy thousand. So multiply this with this, multiply this with this. You are going to get one lakh ninety two thousand nine forty and two lakh seven seven uh, seven thousand six thirty. 
add this two together you are going to get 4 lakh 570 minus your initial investment 3 lakh so 1 lakh 570 you are going to get okay so 1 lakh 5000 now let's do how we did for our the top one okay we will calculate we will get the npv then we will calculate our joint probability joint probability 0.5 into 0 0.3 0 0.15 0 0.5 into 0 0.4 0 0.2 0.5 into 0 0.3 0 0.15 now multiply this with this this with this this with this so you are going to get 4 lakh uh, sorry 4704 12,424, 15,085. Add all these together. Okay, add all these together. You are going to get 2 lakh uh, 29,200, which is same as project A. Okay, if you compare project A and project B, same cash flows we are getting. Now, let's calculate the risk done identify the best and the worst possible outcome for B. So, if you look at here, okay, NPV are negative. So, in project B, the worst possible outcome is the cash flow which we get at 1,80,000. Why? Because we have got lot of negative NPVs. Whereas, the best project for this project A would be cash flow of 2,22,000. Why? Because we are getting all the positive cash inflows. This one we have to write it in the exam. Identify the best and the worst possible outcome of B. Okay. Which of this project, if any, would you recommend? Why? Now you have to decide and tell which of these two projects, either project A or project B, you are going to take. If I am... Uh, uh, evaluating this project I would have evaluated this depending upon the cash flows if you look at project A cash flows are very simple 2 lakh 2 lakh okay uh, for the two years discount factor is everything is there but if you come to project B probability is attached to it so the uh, risk of losing money is more in project B when compared to project A why because uh, probability is attached that's why uh, i would recommend project a why because project a has a steady inflow of cash cash inflow is very steady and no probabilities associated with the cash flow whereas in project b since probability is associated with cash flow there is lot of risk involved in getting that cash flow okay i think i have completed all the uh, sums which were there in your risk and uh, derivative management okay if you want uh, uh, other year question papers like uh, 2000 uh, it started from 2016 17 18 19 i'm going to do all these three uh, i will uh, put a whatsapp group in the description Come there and uh, I will let you know how to access the uh, other year question paper. Okay, this is basically for Bangalore University MBA. Okay, so we have done for risk management and derivatives. Okay, thank you friends.